Hi there, and welcome to my YouTube channel. In today's video, we're going to explore how we can use the shell application object to create zip files or update a zip file. Um, as you can see on the screen, I have what I called an a shell application deep dive where I explored this object a little bit more in depth, well beyond just zipping files. And as you can see by the table of content, it opens itself up to being able to do all sorts of really useful things. So keep this in the back of your mind, take a look at the article, and you'll be amazed a little bit about what this little object actually offers us as developers. Um, like I list here very quickly, you can open files and folders and URLs. You can use it to get information about your system. You can use it to determine paths to what they call special folders, your user profile, desktop, temporary folder, et cetera, et cetera. You can use it to create a folder picker dialog. Um, so a user can go select a folder and then you act upon it. Uh, you can use it to determine if a file or a folder exists. You can use it to create a folder structure. You can use it to list subfolders and all the files contained within, so recursively. You can even use it, we're not going to explore it today, but in a later video, you can use it to even list the files in a zip file. So that can actually be very useful um, when you're looking to update the content of a zip file, for instance. Um, and then, as I say, all the rest of the items there are zipping. So we can create zip files, we can update zip files, we can extract a zip file, we can extract a single file from a zip file, we can list the files within a zip file. So it's one of these multifaceted objects that offers well, a whole slew of different options. It's just a question of knowing how to code it and uh, using it. And so feel free. Each one of these, if I just click on one very randomly, will bring you to a section, and you'll see here the code. You just copy-paste and you use it. Okay, enough of that said. Um, everything you need is here, so feel free. Let's dive in, in our case, into VBA, where we're able to interact with this and look at it. Now, before we dive in to specific code, let me just say this very quickly. What we're exploring today with the shell is the most basic form of creating a zip file. Now, this suffices in like 99% of cases, but it it does have its limitations. It's the same idea as doing a right click and then compress as a zip, okay? You don't have the options and all the bells and whistles attached. We can also turn towards, let's say, using PowerShell, and I may explore that in another video, because PowerShell does offer us the ability to create zip files without a doubt. The issue here and the reason I favor Shell um, is just simply is it's built in, okay? Versus if we go PowerShell, we have to push it out to PowerShell, launch the PowerShell exe, pass it the argument, let it load, run the command, and then this is faster. In my testing, uh, it is faster. So PowerShell is great for certain things. But in this instance, we have something that we can employ that just equally is acceptable, produces the same output, but in reality is faster. Now, if we need the bells and whistles, and this once again may be a video of a later date, then I probably turn towards something like 7-zip, because 7-zip has a command line client that we can use to automate the process. And then you can get into, you know, splitting a zip file, adding a password to a zip file, all those fun things that if you need, well, file uh, seven zip offers you those abilities, but neither PowerShell nor the shell application do. Okay. These are basic. They allow us to do certain things. Yes, do them very well. But for all those advanced features, we're going to have to turn to something else. Now, enough said about all of that. When it comes to the shell command for today's purpose, creating a zip file, uh, updating a zip file, um, we're going to need one helper function. I'm using the shell file exists. We could use a whole slew of different approaches, but all this function is for is to determine if a file actually exists on a computer. So you can use an alternative and change the code. But this is the one that's baked in because I was exploring the shell application. Therefore, I'm using the shell application to validate that the file exists as well. Um, then in the zipping, this is all we have. 
Um, this function here is all we need to create a zip file. Now, I tried to make this function as flexible and comprehensive as possible. So yes, this could even be further simplified. But let's explore it and you'll understand a little bit of why it's the length it is because it allows us to do a little bit more than just zipping a file. Okay, so as you can see here, uh, we'll come back to the arguments in just a second, but I want to cover something you're going to see in all my functions relating to the shell application and several others on my website is I'm using compiler directive, conditional compiler directives. What does that mean? It means that I have a constant. Now, it could be in the function, but when you're in a module, it can only happen once. So I actually have it at the module level up here. So I have this constant, and it says shell32 early bind. So basically, is this code going to be running early bound? It's a yes or no. If you say yes, then we're going to use early binding, which means we have to go into tools, reference, and we got to add the appropriate reference library. But we gain with that IntelliSense. If we have it as it is now, late binding, there is no reference library specified, but we lose the IntelliSense. However, by using late binding, it is more version tolerant. So when we send something to users, clients, we're much better to do it as false and use late bound. And when we're doing internal development, or if we're in a very controlled environment where we can be guaranteed everyone has the exact same versions of everything, well, then we could also stay in early binding. But basically, at the end of the day, I use true when I'm doing development, then I switch it to false when I'm going to distribute it to my users. Enough of that said. Let's look at our input arguments. The uh, zip file. So what is the path and file name of the zip file we want to create or update? Then we come over here, folder or file. So this is the folder or the file that we want to add to the zip file. And lastly, overwrite zip. Do we want to start from scratch? if the file already exists. Do we want to overwrite it completely or are we appending to the existing file? And appending also means that if the file already exists that we're trying to push, you're going to get the standard Windows pop-up asking you if you actually want to replace or not the existing file. So the built-in functionality and dialog still apply when we run this code. And then a couple of general variables that I'm going to use. And now let's just start. So how does all of this work? It's very simple. The first thing I'm doing is I'm checking, does that zip file exist? If it does not, then it's going to run this code. Or if we said we want to overwrite the existing zip file, then it's also going to run this code. What does this code do? This code creates the zip file and adds a single line to it. So this basically creates a blank zip file. And then we move on here and we're going to build an object of that zip file now. So if we had to create it, it's going to bind to it. If it already existed, it skips over this, but we still have to bind to it because we're going to work with it. And then we come here, we do a little bit of string concatenation and parsing because we've got to separate the path from the file name. And then we come and I look here in string. So in the file name that I've asked to add to the zip file, is there a period? If there is no period, well, I'm assuming that this is a subfolder or a folder. OK, not a file per se. So I'm going to create an item bound to that folder. I'm going to also use this opportunity to determine its type. And we're going to use that again to ensure that we're dealing with a folder. And then we're going to count the number of items in the folder. So how many items, how many files are present in that folder? Then we come here. If in the case there is a period, so I should be dealing with a file. Uh, in this case, we're going to bind to that file, yes. And then we're going to pull its type. And we're going to set, well, okay, there's one item. Now we come down and we're going to look at the type. So we've gone through, we've bound to them, we've checked their type. We're going to check, are we dealing with a file folder? Yes or no. 
if it's a file folder, well, in that case, we're going to copy into the zip folder all of the folder's items. So if there's one file, 10 files, 200 files, all of them get put into the zip file. If, on the other hand, we're dealing with a file, well, then we're going to copy into the folder, the zip folder, just that file. And that's it. Uh, and if we've done all of these operations and no errors occurred, everything happened smoothly, well, then this shell, the function itself, did complete successfully, so we return true. If you look in the header of the function, I always explain here the usage examples of how this would work. So the first one I'm demonstrating, we're going to create this zip file on the desktop, uh, and we're going to pass it this folder. So it's going to take all the items in that folder, and it's going to put them into that zip file. The second example is we're going to create this zip file, and we're going to add this file. Now, if we ran them back to back, it wouldn't, on the second call, it wouldn't create it. It would simply append into it. So that's how easy, how hard it is to run. And if we do do something like this, um, let's see. Let's just see. I will try it. And yes, indeed, it did create the zip file, as you can see, with the file in it. Let's try running it a second time so I can demonstrate to you that you will get the built-in Windows dialogs. And as you can see, because we're trying to run the exact same zip with the exact same file and we're doing the append, now we get the copy, replace, or don't copy dialog. So you still get that. And this is where possibly first checking the content of the zip file can be helpful or simply overwriting it. Because if we come and instead we say, no, we want to override, so we're no longer appending. Well, now it will allow it and the file has been created. Um, and I can also just demonstrate if we do an append, I'm going by memory here. I believe I have that. And I open it up. As you can see, it just added that file for me. So that's how complicated it is to create a zip file with VBA. It is very simple. And this function gives you a bit of flexibility. You can insert individual files or complete folder contents. You can override or append. Um, you know, the world is your oyster in this case. So I hope that helps a few of you out there that are looking. All the code is on my website. Just copy paste and drop it into place. And with a single call like this, you will be up and running and operational. And uh, we will see you in the next video. Um, I will do some more videos on zipping. Um, specifically, how do we now extract from a zip file. How do we list the files in a zip file? But that will be in a future video. Take care, everyone. Have a great day.